Welcome to this Wisealt tutorial. In this video we're going to cover errors and debugging in Excel VBA, or what to do when things go wrong. And trust me, there's plenty of things that can go wrong when you're programming in VBA. We'll start by looking at the various types of errors you're likely to encounter in VBA, and those are syntax errors, compile errors, and runtime errors. We'll cover each of the different types, tell you when they're likely to occur, and what you can do to solve the problem when they do occur. After we've done that, we'll show you a few debugging techniques as well. So we'll talk about how you can step through your code line by line, how you can set breakpoints, which allows you to run your code up to a certain stage, and then how you can display and use the debug toolbar as well. So let's get started. So in this video, we're going to show you some of the things that can go wrong when you're writing and running VBA code. And I speak from bitter experience when I say there are many things that can go wrong when you're, when you're working with VBA. We're going to show you some of the most common things I think you'll encounter. The first type of problem you're likely to encounter in VBA is called a syntax error. And this is essentially an error in the grammar or the structure of an instruction that you've written. So usually misplaced punctuation like double quotes or full stops, etc. It's very easy to spot syntax errors because pretty much as soon as you make the mistake, um, you're informed that you've, that you've done something wrong. So for instance, if I remove this closed parenthesis on one line of code, as soon as I try to move away from that line of code, it's highlighted for me in a couple of different ways that I've made a mistake. First of all, if you can see it, the text has turned red in the background. And I've also got a dialog box which appears that tells me I've made uh, what it refers to as a compile error. Um, and it actually gives me a sensible suggestion in this case. It says it expects a list separator or a closed bracket. I don't know if you can also see it's highlighted the piece of code where it thinks that list separator or closed bracket should appear. If I click OK, syntax errors are really easy to fix. You simply have to modify the grammar so that your sentence makes sense. So if I pop my close round bracket back in again, click on a different line to confirm it, and there's my syntax error fixed. Now, it's actually very easy to confuse the syntax error message dialog box by making a different type of mistake. In this example, what I'm going to do is run a move the set of double quotes after the cell reference. And if I click on another line of code to confirm that I've entered that line, I get the same dialog box appearing telling me it's missed, it's expecting a list separator or closed bracket. And it's highlighted the word created in my, uh, in my line of code. It's clearly a syntax error because I've got the line of text highlighted in red, but it's clearly picked out completely the wrong thing this time. So although some of these some of these error messages can be useful. The syntax error messages that can be generated are very, very easily confused. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to fix the problem that I've deliberately created. Click on another line to confirm it. My personal preference is to not display the dialog box if I make a syntax error. You can actually switch those off by heading to the Tools menu in the VB Editor, choosing Options, and then unchecking the box that says Auto Syntax Check. Once I've done that, if I click OK, I can still make syntax errors and I can still get my syntax errors highlighted for me. If I make the same mistake again, I can take away the double quotes, click on another line of code, and as long as you can see it, it's highlighted in red, so I've clearly got a problem with that line. Uh, from a previous video, we mentioned that if you can't see uh, red and green colors, you can always head to the Tools menu, choose Options, choose Editor Format, Select the type of text you want to modify, such as syntax error, and you can actually choose a different colour to make it stand out for you. So, personal preference, as I say, is not to have the uh, the syntax error message dialog box popping up. I find it gets in the way. I think it's more than sufficient to have a line highlighted in red to indicate that I've made a mistake that needs to be fixed. Okay, so the next level of error we can look at is something called a compile error. Compiling is something that happens for you automatically whenever you try to run a subroutine. It's basically Excel VBA's way of sense checking the lines of code that you've written. So here's an example of a, of a compile error. If I accidentally or deliberately misspell the word range in one of my lines of code, notice that when I click away from that line, it's not highlighted as a syntax error. So syntactically or grammatically, that line does make sense. I've got all the right words and all the right punctuation characters in the correct position. It's just a misspelling of the word that is the problem. So if I try to run this subroutine, what's going to happen is I'm going to get 
a compile error message. And compile errors are some of the most useful ones because they highlight almost exactly where the problem is. It tells me that that keyword has not been recognized or sub or function not defined in VBA speak. If I click OK, I can fix the problem by simply retyping the word as range. And you might also notice that the first line of your subroutine is highlighted in yellow, indicating that it's trying to run at the moment. What you're in at this point is something called break mode. So you can see at the top of the screen there's a little word break in square brackets. Usually the best policy is to reset your subroutine before you attempt to do it again. So if you hit the reset button, this little blue square, we could also head to the run menu and choose reset from there as well. And then you can attempt to run your program again. Now compile errors don't actually crop up at the point you run a subroutine. Compile errors crop up immediately before your subroutine runs. So it's possible to highlight compile errors without choosing to run a subroutine. You can do it by, if I get, again make the same mistake, by misspelling range. I can head to the debug menu and choose to compile my entire project. So this will go through and sense check every line that I've written without attempting to run anything. So when I do that, again, I'll get exactly the same message as I saw earlier, compile error, sub or function not defined. I have to click OK, fix the problem before I can successfully run this program. Notice this time that your subroutine isn't in break mode, so I don't have to hit the reset button before I can try to do anything else. While we're talking about compile errors, it's worthwhile mentioning another technique that you can use to make the compiler even more fussy than it currently is. So it actually gives you more useful error messages as you try to run and, and compile your projects. So for instance, without this technique turned on, I can make mistakes such as misspell the names of functions, such as uh, date, I take, I take away the E. And I can also um, make spelling mistakes in, in references to, to constants, such as color constants. So again, if I, if I misspell this in some way, I can't spell turquoise at the best of times, so I take away the, the I there. Now, what would happen normally if I try to run or compile my project? If I, if I choose to, to compile it, first of all, I don't get any compile errors. If I try to run my subroutine, I'll find that it actually works. It's performed a job. So it should have made, put the date in cell B2, and it should have changed the background color as L to, to pale turquoise. But if I go back to my um, to Excel itself, I'll find that, first of all, the date doesn't appear in cell B2. Instead of pale turquoise, the background colour of those cells is black. Now, I can make my compiler pick up on these mistakes that I've made by adding a couple of extra keywords to the top of my module. So if I go back to the Visual Basic Editor, and before the subroutine that I've written, at the very, very top of the entire module, I'm going to write these two words, Option Explicit. Now, these two keywords aren't actually designed for this purpose. Option explicit is designed for working with variables, which is a subject for a later video. But we're going to use it at this point to help us pick up on the spelling mistakes that we've made. So with option explicit turned on, if I head to the debug menu and choose compile project, it's going to pick up on the very first misspelled keyword that it finds. So it doesn't recognize the word dat. And I haven't declared a variable called dat. And as I say, we'll talk about variables later on, but that's just to explain the, the, the message that you actually see. So if I click OK, I know that there's a problem with that specific keyword there. If I spell that one correctly again, I can now try to compile the project again. And this time it should pick up on another keyword that I've misspelled. So again, it says variable not defined. It doesn't recognize the keyword, and I haven't declared a variable called RGB pale turquoise. So if I click OK, if I can, I'll spell turquoise correctly. There we go. And this time when I debug and compile my project, everything passes the compilation. Personally, I always choose to have option explicit at the top of a module. And because I'm too lazy to type it in myself every time, you can set up the Visual Basic Editor to add those words for you automatically. So to do that, head to the Tools menu and choose Options. And on the dialog box which appears, find the box which says Require Variable Declaration. Check that box, click OK, and now the next time you create a new module, you'll find that it automatically has the words Option Explicit written in at the top. And that will be true from now on in this, uh, this Visual Basic Editor. The final type of error we're going to look at is something called a runtime error. And as the name suggests, this is a problem that occurs when your program is actually running. So 
you can generate runtime errors in a huge, vast variety of different ways. This is probably the most common type of error you're likely to encounter, I think. So let's have a quick look. Uh, one reasonably easy way to generate a runtime error is to try to refer to a cell which doesn't actually exist. So I'm going to try to refer to a cell whose reference is a ZZZ1. And I'm pretty certain there aren't any cells with that cell reference in my workbook. The last cell you can refer to in the last column is XFD in the latest versions of Excel. So if I try to compile this project, just show you that the compilation doesn't pick up on this type of error. If I compile my project, everything passes compilation. It's not until I run my subroutine that I'm going to generate this error. So if I choose to play it or run my subroutine, I get a fairly standard runtime error message dialog box. So it says method range of object global failed. That's not necessarily a particularly useful bit of information. What is a bit more useful is the ability to click this button here called debug. Now what this will do is take you into break mode as we saw earlier on and a line of your code will be highlighted in yellow. But fortunately with this type of message, a runtime error, the line that's highlighted in yellow is the one that has caused the problem to occur. So the, um, the, the, the debug button is the most sensible one to click on when, you're, when you've got a runtime error message dialog box. So this is a nice, easy and obvious one to solve. If I change the cell reference back to B1, I've got several choices at this point now as, well, as to what I can do. My subroutine has actually successfully executed all of the lines of code up to this point. In fact, if I go back into Excel itself quickly, you can see that I've got a new worksheet and the first three titles have been added to cells. So back in the VB editor, if I hit the reset button now at this point, I'd be left with a half finished subroutine. What I can do instead is simply choose to run it from its current position. So where the yellow arrow is in the left hand side of my, uh, my module, if I simply click play or continue, that will run the subroutine all the way through to the end, hopefully without any further errors. If I go back to Excel quickly, I'll see that it's completed. So we've seen the three main levels of errors that can occur to you when you're working with VBA code. We've seen syntax errors, which occur when you're writing your code. We've seen compile errors, which happen when the project is compiled. And we've seen runtime errors, which happen when your program is actually running. So what we'd like to do next is show you a couple of other useful techniques you can use to help you to work out when things are going wrong in your programs. So earlier on we talked to you about something called break mode, which is a mode you can access when you've caused a runtime error. So if I make another one of my most common mistakes, I think, misspelling the word color in the, uh, the English way rather than the, uh, the, the American way. If I try to run this code now, I'm going to get a runtime error telling me that something has gone wrong. If I click the debug button, that's the point at which I enter the break mode. So at this point, I can see that there's clearly a problem with this particular line. I need to fix that problem by removing and spelling the word color incorrectly and then running that one through to the end. So as I say, we can click the continue button to carry on running that one. Now, break mode is actually a particularly useful tool because it allows you to work through a program step by step. And you can actually force a subroutine to go into break mode at the, the instant you start running it. To go into break mode, make sure that you've selected something inside the subroutine you want to, to debug. And then you can either head to the debug menu and choose this option called step into or you can simply just press the F8 key on your keyboard. If I choose this option, you'll see that the first line of your subroutine is highlighted in yellow. So what this means is that this line has not yet been executed, but I can step through my program now by either carrying on clicking debug, step into, or much more conveniently, pressing the F8 key. So as I press F8, it moves to the next line of code and it will execute that line when I press F8 again. Now, it can also be quite useful at this point to watch what is happening in Excel itself. So if you restore down your window, your main Visual Basic Editor window, you can then change the size of your screen to expose Excel in the background. 
And if I then carry on pressing F8, watch what happens when I press F8 on worksheet.add. You should find that a new worksheet appears in Excel, and there it is. If I press F8 on the line that changes the value of cell A1, you should see that cell A1's value will change. And so on, and so on, and so on, as you work through. Now, if you reach a line in which there is likely to be a syntax error, sorry, a, 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 a runtime error, mixing my error types there. For instance, if I enter a, a cell reference, which I know doesn't exist, when I press F8 on this line, it will cause the runtime error as usual. So I can click debug here, that takes me back to the line that I've just made a mistake on, fix the problem, and then carry on pressing F8 to step through to the end of the subroutine. It's very important that you don't remain in break mode. So if you're using the F8 key to step through, make sure that you either finally press F8 while you're on the words end sub, or hit the reset button, but make sure that you're not still in break mode when you've finished debugging your program. When you're stepping through very large programs, it can be quite annoying to have to step through many, many, many lines of code to get to the small part that you might be interested in stepping through. So to help you with that, you can set something called a break point. You can set break points in a couple of different ways. First of all, the quickest and easiest, although least reliable, I think, is to simply click next to a line of code in this gray bar which appears at the left hand side. So if I click here in the gray bar, you can see a break point appears. It, got, it gets a little sort of reddish brown dot and the entire line will turn the same reddish brown color in the background. To take away a break point, you can simply click back on the, uh, the same icon. The other way to set a break point is to click somewhere on the line you're interested in and you can then head to the debug menu and choose toggle breakpoint. You could also just press the F9 key as well. So toggle breakpoint will turn it on. I can press F9 to turn it off. All these techniques, by the way, are also available from an extra toolbar. If I right click at the top of the screen, I can choose the debug toolbar and that appears floating over the, the, the main part of the, the screen. If I drag it up to the top of the screen, nest it up there at the top, I can then set breakpoints with a little hand symbol, toggle on and off. And I can also choose to step into a program, using, uh, step through a program using the step into button here or pressing F8. So let's set a breakpoint on my first line which tries to change a colour. And what I'd like to do is run through the entire program now up to that point. So I can do that by simply choosing to run my subroutine. So if I click on my little green triangle or press F5, I'll find that the entire program has run all the way up to this point. But at this stage now, it's paused and is in break mode. So from now on, I can choose to use the F8 key to step through, or again, click on my step into button on the debug toolbar. So I can press F8 to step through, all the way through to the end of the subroutine. Finally, I'm just going to turn off my breakpoint to make sure that my program will run properly the next time I do it. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.